Okay, guys, I got a question by Mark, uh, one of our professional jewelers on our jewelry design course, and he's um, asking a question about um, the getting this to become sharp um, when he uses a snapshot 3D. So if I look at this image, um, it's pretty pixelated anyway. Um, he said he'd clean it up, but we should better get a good enough result out of this. In fact, we should better clean up on this pixelated image. And I'm not sure this is exactly the one that he was talking about because he said he cleaned it up. So uh, anyway, I'll just reverse that out. So it's black on white. And then I'm just gonna export this out as a JPEG. So let me just save it as, let me get rid of that background. Don't need that. Okay, uh, just going to drop a black behind it just in case there was any color information there and drop that on control E. Right, let me just save that up. Okay, um, right, okay, so let's jump into ZBrush now, bring this in and drop it into Snapshot 3D. So, yeah, I'll have to reverse this out. Um, okay, let me save that off. Okay. So um, ZBrush is opening, so I'll jump into that and then we'll use Snapshot these 3D to drop it down and do a clean up. Okay, so I'm going to load in our star 3D. I'm gonna grab that up and make that polymesh 3D um, and go straight into edit mode. Okay, so that's in there. I'm gonna to go to my texture and I'm gonna import that file that Mark has and we're going to go in there and we're going to add it to spotlight so there it is so I'll just bring it across here snapshot 3d it which for some reason is not giving me the color why what's going on with this alpha uh, let me go into here and make alpha. Just export that out. Okay, well, this isn't the problem that um, Mark had. Okay, let's try this. Okay, that's really weird. I don't know why it's doing this, but it doesn't matter in any case because I can still sort this problem out. So control shift, um, that's what we've got. So you can see that it's not bad. Um, I've got to get the reverse of this out and I can do that easily anyway. In fact, what I'll do is I'll use this plane that I've got here. So I'll take this plane and I'll just produce it down like that. And then I can just use this one, and I don't know what's going on here, why it's doing this, but I don't really care, um, as long as I get the result. Okay, so we just done a Boolean of that, so I'll just create a Boolean, and make Boolean mesh, boom, boom, boom. So that'll be done in a second, and we'll just append in our Boolean there. So I'm just gonna get rid of these, let me delete them out and delete you out as well and i'm going to control shift alt this area control shift alt this area come into here geometry i know you haven't had this problem i don't know why it's doing that with your file um probably need to look at it more but i'm trying to do this at speed so you can see um i'm pretty it's pretty good for me 
I don't have a problem with this. Um, you know, mine's pretty good. So the image is good. Uh, anyway, um, if I was trying to sort this problem out, if I did have any kind of thing, I'll just show you what I do. I'm just going to duplicate this down here. And if you look, in, when you set these up, it gives you separate poly groups. Let me just turn the line off. So what you can do is you can control and shift this top bit to get rid of everything apart from the top. And then you can delete hidden delete hidden this will get rid of the hidden so we're just left with one face now what we can do now is we can go into Z remesher and we could click the same um, and it will because of this edge it will flow around the edge at the moment if we look at the lines of this it just goes like this but if I now hit the Z remesh here what it'll do is it will try and go around the edge of the poly group like that well this is great because now it should be following the flow of the geometry, which is great. So you can then go into something like your Z modeler brush and you can bring this right down, go over one of the faces and go all polygons, Q mesh. Let's go over a face and you can pull. That's gonna take a little bit of time here. I'm gonna pull it up. Let's pull it up to about there and then release all right so that's done so if i look at it now it's following the flow now obviously we're losing a bit around here where it's faceted but because we've got clean topology on this um, we can crease the edges if there's an angle and that's what we'd want to do because if i just smooth this now what will happen let me just put it dynamics on you'll see it will round those edges which you might want but if I'm going to crease those edges so they're deadly tight, I can come into my crease tolerance, tolerance of 45. So as long as that's uh, um, uh, more than 45, it's going to actually put a crease in around that edge. There you go. See that little crease appear? So now what it means is to get rid of this faceting around the edge, I can increase the amount of subdivision levels like that. And you're going to see that they will get smaller and smaller until they eventually disappear. And now you've got deadly tight um, stuff now there might be a bit of clean up around areas like that where something's happened it's gone a little bit a little bit crappy don't know re really what's happened with that bit I probably want to go in there and probably control shift alt click in there Delete that little face down, or, or probably even better than that, I would actually go in and just use a boolean on it. So I'd go and grab one of those pieces, that little bit sticking up there. So it's good these little errors happen because it shows you how I can correct them. So I then go into something like I create a um, cube 3D like this. I'd make that a poly mesh 3D. Come down to cube cube. Q cube it, control W, control D, subdivide this. Oh, need to crease it first. Make sure you crease it first. Crease that little baby, control D to add subdivision levels. So I'm up to quite a high subdivision level. Um, now I can just call this um, something like block, block out, jump back into my model which is this one here that's got that horrible little facet appearing on the top of my clean topology, not nice. And I can append this little block in now. And this block I can actually make really big so I could scale this up like that, maybe not that high, something like that. So it covers my stuff. And then I could do a, I don't know, I could come in there now and I could do a subtraction so I could push that down onto the model there. And you can actually see that little facet thing still there. So it might be a little bit of a something going on. Anyway, do that to knock that back down and go make Boolean mesh. And that should be clean. There we go. I'll just append the new one in. There he is. 
turn these two off make sure I've got no funny things going on around the outside and now what you've got is you've got a really clean flow to this topology Oop, down there and you've cut the amount of subdivisions as well so that's one way of doing it mark I'll send you back this file so you can have a look at it so let me just save this out Jacob so um, save that on my desktop so I'll send this back to you and I'll upload this video now